1978, Philips released the Magnavox Odyssey 2, which had a mezze of worldwide brand names. This one is the European Video Pack G7000. So, let's open it up, fix what we need to, and review this second generation home video games console. On the base, we can see this label, which confirms it's a video pack computer model G7000 issue 36. And at the rear, there's this tiny keyed interface, which is presumably the 9 volts input. To confirm this, let's open it up and check what the interface is connected to. That rather large capacitor tells me this is the power input. Removing the video modulator connection and the two screws holding the motherboard to the case. Which reveals the keyboard membrane ribbon, the two tethered joystick connectors and the cartridge slot. There are three key integrated circuits. The first being 128 bytes of RAM, the Intel audio and video processor, and the Intel CPU running at 1.79 MHz. And whilst we have access, let's clean the cartridge interface, the inside of the case, and installation of some period correct rubber feet. As we already know the voltage and now the barrel's size, let's install our own power solution. One of the joysticks was missing its base plate and handle. So let's open it up, give it a clean, and install our 3D printed base and joystick handle. Having cleaned the membrane keyboard and the cartridge bay area, let's load a cartridge game called Race, which is video pack number one. Removing the cartridge dust cover I downloaded and 3D printed from Thingiverse, let's insert the cartridge game and apply power to see if this video pack G7000 actually works. Five years later, Philips released the G7200 in 1983, which was essentially the same cartridge based system but with an internal monochrome 9 inch CRT display. Which is why there's a contrast and volume selector and on the other side a brightness control. On the base, labelling confirms this is a G7200 issue 5, 
with a single electromagnetic speaker and two six-pin DINs, which are presumably for the two-player joysticks. And at the rear, we can see this mystery 8-pin DIN connector. Unfortunately, this unit is damaged on the bezel above the CRT display. Carefully removing the G7200's case reveals its motherboard and although different in design still maintains those three key integrated circuits we saw on the G7000. As this is an integrated solution we can see the electromagnetic speaker and a label reaffirming the type and issue number and the serial number. On the rear of the monochrome monitor there are multiple references and markings. Whilst its motherboard, although dusty, appears to be intact. Looking further down the monochrome monitor's support, the aftermarket on-off switch is loose. Applying plenty of hot glue has fixed this. Inspecting the mystery 8-pin DIN at the rear didn't really provide any clues. So having reviewed the instruction manual, we can see point 15 is a DIN output, and further down we can see this output is for a colour TV. So let's check that out later. The top of the case provides access to the cartridge slot and the power on off mechanism. Reviewing the bezel damage from the front and then from the inside we can see evidence of a partial fix. So let's clean it up, assess the damage and work out the best way we can remediate this issue. To secure the bezel split, I applied some hot glue with the intention of further stabilising this damage. Followed by numerous thin layers of filler before lightly sanding it down to create a smooth, even surface. I then colour matched some paint to take the edge off the repair and took a photo of the G7200 logo colour matched that in a paint program, printed a label to conceal the damage as best I could. Removing the dust cover I downloaded and 3D printed out. Let's power up the G7200. It's not working and this is because there are no games in ROM. Securing a video pack cartridge game, we can see this works. However, the image is only monochrome. So let's see what we can do about that.
This is a homebrew multi-card. This one contains 32 games which you can select before committing and running via the keyboard. So let's finish up by playing some of the better games available on the video pack.